Welcome back to States and Kingdoms. Today we're talking about Jeff Buckley and his album Grace from 1994. Here's another album that I listened to first. I knew you were going to say that. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, unfortunately, I got this album when uh, Jeff had already died. So I didn't actually listen to it while he was alive. Yeah, you know, I, I definitely heard of him. Um, but I never, you know, this was something we were talking about earlier when we were talking about, yeah, when we were talking about this, you know, I don't remember seeing music videos ever in, of Jeff Buckley's oh. around ni- 1994, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, we were fully immersed in MTV at that point. Uh, don't recall seeing him on MTV, really never heard anything from the album on the radio. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, true story, personally, pers- personal story. Um, a girl in my class when I was in, like, I think I was in 12th grade, a girl in my class was, was talking about how much she liked Jeff Buckley. And I was like, I was like, oh, I was like, I should, I should check that out. And, and I got Grace and I loved it. The end. <laughs> I do think about that often. I don't know what if it matters or if anyone else does stuff like that, or they kind of, you know, think about, you know, either if they were alive at a certain time when another person was alive, you know, like that crossover time, like, Oh, I was alive when they were alive. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, so like, like, would it, I was still alive. I was born before Fred Astaire died. Right. Yeah. Cool. No, but I, I definitely do that. And of course, I don't think it would have made a difference. For... I also might be the reincarnation of William Powell. Okay, so you brought us to that level. So now let me tell you who I might be the reincarnation of. George Raft. No, John Lennon. John Lennon. Not possible. Yeah, um, I was definitely conceived uh, the night he was shot. No one can conceive of you. <laughs> True story. My point being... Would it matter for my enjoyment and understanding of the music to have listened to it while he was no, sir. alive? Exactly. Anyway. So everything I just said doesn't matter. Well, we knew that already. <laughs> the, the thing is, interestingly, it's actually sketches, I think, that, that captured my attention most. Yes. And then, then I listened to this. Yeah, sketches for my sweetheart, the drunk. Right, and and I and even though we'll talk about that album, and, and it's, very, it's really interesting. It's a very special um, album for me, too. I love this album. I thought, you know, this this is this there's something about Jeff Buckley that is totally unique. You know, even though I mean, you know, he does sound a lot like his father, and he did follow, you know, Tim Buckley in a number of things. And you know, I've I've listened to Tim Buckley, not everything. Yeah, same. Really, I was think, thinking about this uh, before. I mean, there's really nothing that sounds like Jeff Buckley. His mix of music, which is represented on both of his releases, this and the posthumous release, you know, it's, it's such an interesting thing. I mean, he there's the folkiness. There, you know, there's there's a, a kind of, I you know, there's the Edith Piaf thing. There's the the was it Nusrat Nusrat Fatih Ali Khan? Yeah. There's, you know, there's Tim Buckley, of course, there's Led Zeppelin, yeah. there's like the Smiths, there's, you know, there, there's a lot that goes in. You and, could pick it apart and you can see each, each thing. And that mix is, you know, that mix of music, uh, and it, it really is a mix. You know, he was interested in a lot of music and it does, it does make itself known. There's really no, no one quite like that. The people that followed him only followed that like one side of that. Yeah, I always got the sense that most people who claim Jeff Buckley or at least, you know, say that they're, you know, a fan seems like they're more into the singer songwriter type uh, version of him. Yeah. You know, the I, I mean, I... the troubadour singing in the cafe, you know, Shanae and, and that sort of thing. I mean, so that's something that, you know, we've always talked about. Grace in particular has such awesome rock songs on it, like rock and roll songs, the songs that are originals that Jeff wrote, um, you know, either alone or or with Gary Lucas or, Mm -hmm. you know, those original compositions are so strong and so exciting and really really like powerful 
rock songs, ballads, like every, they run they're there's run the gamut. They're just awesome. I, I love so real. Uh, there, there's there's some really awesome crescendos on these songs. It is great. Like, From it, Mojo just, Pin to Grace, to, great. I mean Eternal just, Life. Um, great bass, great drumming. Like yeah. everything's tight and awesome chord choices. It's, you know, I mean this this yeah. they're uh, really right. they are powerful songs intense songs yeah because the singing you know on, on those songs you know he, he goes from you know like often he'll end up in a, a wailing type of of situation you know, you know? Like, like, yeah he was a big whaler you know people like to talk about his operatic vibrato rich well, vocals of course i don't know if i call but, them operatic it's, we're I, just listening to rob halford I, I think that's yeah that's more well, you know what people like to say. I know, you know what people. they say. I know. I know people. But, well, I mean, where his voice really does it for me is when he's really doing that super forceful, More growly, screamy, plenty, plenty, plenty thing. Mm. Um, but, you know, it works so well on, on the original songs. And, uh, well, you know, the, the I, others I can kind of take. You tap really, dancing around this. I, I know. You I can take or leave the other ones. All right, Donald O'Connor. I can let's, leave let's... one of them all the way. I'm not a fan of Hallelujah. There, I said it. The middle of this album is a little. It's got a little soft underbelly. It's so the album. The track listing is interesting, and yeah. I I'm not yeah super into how they just kind of lumped all the soft songs right in the middle. I would have spread them out a little bit if they have to be there. I've always I. I think I've always felt that too from when listening to this. It it makes the album seem less rockish than it really is, I think, for one thing. Just because you have those three songs all in a row. Lilac Wine is fine. I, I, I always like that song. And, you know, but if they had actually just stuck that one on and four, you have that four in a row, you know, right. he's Ruf, Rufus Wainwright. Yes. But you also have, you know, you've got Lover, Should Have Come Over, you know, yeah. which which has a similar tempo to Lilac Wine already. And yeah. um, I don't know why you even need Lilac Wine then. I, I You know, Lilac Wine's more like a little like cabaret-ish. It's got like a, that kind of a feel. It fits in because it actually is different than anything else. Yeah. Um, you know, the one of the primary issues is that uh, two of the... This, softer slower songs are six minutes long that too you know that does, and, yeah, and, that up. Too. and um it, it slows the album down i know a lot of people I mean, I mean there's no question yeah people love hallelujah i i i'm with you i never i just never really i never really cared yeah. for it i it's but uh, is it that it's just played out do you feel like you're playing the favorite because everyone that's all anyone talks about jeff buckley is that song that's, that's, the that's only, yeah. That's the only that's, song you that do tend that to, people it's like, to like. Just that song, which he didn't write, of course, and he was a great songwriter. And there are, I, I mean, just Hello, on this Grace. album. Hello, title track. I know. I, know, I, I, I know. mean, just on this, I mean, I love Dream Brother is is an yeah. astonishing song. So real. Loves. I love that song. It's incredible. Mojo Pin is ex- so exciting, and all very much Jeff Buckley. Like you, you know. I don't know who else that would be. I don't know who else would write a song like that. You know, who else would, who else, of course, once he's singing, he, who, there is no one else that could be. But you know what I mean? He definitely had style. He had, he had a songwriting style as well. And so, yeah, I think. Last Goodbye. Last Goodbye, yes, of course. Oh my God, it's beautiful. To me, I feel like it's just that it's like playing the favorite. And I'm, I kind of resent that, that he's known for, you know, a song that he didn't write. And, you know, strangely enough, though, Leonard Cohen is known for Mojo Pin. No, honestly, to answer your question from 10 minutes ago. Yes. Um, no, I never liked Hallelujah. Never. Not really. Sorry. I um, I would say, yeah, it's it's my least favorite song on the album because I would just rather listen to every other song on the album mm-hmm. another time. I often skipped. I mean, of course, you know, I, I got this on CD, so I was listening on CD, which very easily enables you to, to skip a doodle. And I did. So, yeah, I often, I mean, to be completely honest, I often, I would, I would skip all the way to Eternal Life. Well, you know, I, the, the, the reason why, and that's why track listing is so important, because I wouldn't skip the other two songs, uh, really, I really wouldn't. But 
when you're you go given the option you want to keep that yeah that you're energy in that and mode. intensity yes you're all... in that you want that energy and then all of a sudden you know there are three songs that are all yeah. cuz you're talking about there's seven seven originals right seven original compositions and none of them are bad none of them are boring even... every single one of them is an absolute yeah. winner so i've always thought i think you've always thought that you know why didn't they just round out the album with more original songs, or yeah. you know, you want I, I don't know, it's like we'll just move honestly and, one, and one, one, move them around. One of those, one of those probably shouldn't be there, yeah. So it's just you know, it's just one of those things. That's why I mean, Sketches for My Sweetheart the Drunk is obviously a very different kind of album, and God only knows if he would have even released any of it or part of it or yeah. what it would have ended up sounding like. But, but he should have listened to his Tom Berlin, <laughs> yeah. I know. But I'm glad that we have it because I really do love that album very much. And I think all of those songs that are, you know, at least on the first, the first um, album. Yeah, we'll talk first about that. First disc, you know, all original. Mm -hmm. Anyway. That is the only real critique of, of the album. Uh, you know, I think it's a great debut. I mean, obviously, if a debut that shows off uh, just what a musician is capable of and, and uh, you know, that certainly does that really well. Yeah, because all of the songs, you know, it's not like he has to, you know, they all have to be like up tempo. Because they're not. Or like really heavy, you I know. Mean, even like So Real is not, is obviously Dream, not a the, heavy metal no, song. No, most of them are, have their slow parts, you know, and, and get more intense or, you know, get more aggressive in, in parts. I mean, Dream Brother is, is basically a ballad until, you know, like the, the break and, and toward the end and. I mean, what an exciting song. I mean, that's perfect. Ending with Dream Brother is absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. um, awesome, awesome song. And, and speaking of uh, people following Jeff Buckley, Chris Cornell's solo record, you know. Yeah, which, I uh, mean, he yeah he was obviously, I, I read you know, in a best. bunch of different places that Chris Cornell was a big Jeff Buckley fan. So when Chris Cornell went on his own way, um, I think that was a really big influence and, and his first album is, yeah, one of the closest things that I can think of um, to to Grace. You well, know, we're, coming... also, we're also talking about how much Dream Brother, it reminds you of, uh, like, Suicide. Yeah, Dream Brother. Which is interesting, yeah. too. I always thought that, very strange, but yeah, um, like Suicide, the last song on there Super Unknown, Soundgarden. Kind of... Very similar groove, you know, in, mm -hmm. in parts, and... A little eerie how how inter I don't know, it's very interesting the, they're very the middle similar section, way of ending the middle the album. section can feel at times like it could be drifting into one yes. of or one or the other it's cool i, I mean both are so i wonder amazing. i don't know if like jeff buckley was listening to soundgarden you know sure why not Every, a lot of people were yeah i mean they were but yeah you know, you know one of those things like while he was i mean he, he was fully alive for you know this album to come out and a few years after and I'm not sure why he wasn't a bigger star bigger star no it's true I, I know he was he great was, amazing voice whatever great you songs. want to say it great songwriter good looking good looking guy you know charismatic interesting um, no it's very strange good performer you know when you watch those live performances even even I mean even at that time there's a lot of there's a lot of music you live without and yeah. and that's you know quite well above you know some things Never know why certain things catch on or don't or. You know. I think maybe if I think that's maybe been a little bit more directed at, a little heavier, a little bit of a heavier sound, a little bit. I think he would have been happy with that. Well, maybe. It seems like that's I don't know, maybe it's could I'm I'm just projecting. Possibly. Thank you so much for watching our brief discussion of Jeff Buckley and Grace. Please let us know what you think of this album in the comments below. Like this video. Please make sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed. And we'll see you next time.